afternoon and we worship your precious name. We magnify you, Lord. We are so grateful, King of Glory. Once again, an opportunity that you have presented to us in the name of Jesus. Father, we give you praise. We bless your precious name, O oh Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, as we configure this atmosphere, Father, as we draw in your presence this afternoon, let your glory be revealed. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of God. I'm very glad to see us again for the second session of our day two of our conference. And I know the Lord will do us good. Now we are already blessed. And we are going to pray this afternoon as we usher in the service. As we welcome the sessions that are taking place this afternoon. By the grace of God, we are going to encounter God. We are going to experience God. So in the very few minutes we are going to take, we are going to pray this evening or this afternoon. We are going to take a scripture from the book of 1 Corinthians. Chapter 16. And verse 8 and 9. The Bible says, But I tarry, but I will tarry at Ephesus until P Pentecost. For a great door and effectual is opened unto me. There are many adversaries. I will tarry. This was Apostle Paul. Uh, I read another version, and the Bible says. In the, book, uh, in the Bible, a version, a Berean study Bible. The Bible says, Because a great door for effective work has opened unto me, even though many oppose it. This evening we are going to pray ahead of the service that is coming up. We are going to pray generally for the convention. The Lord, every allocation of your men for this season will not be held by the devil. Every allocation that you have meant for our personal life and our families, we receive it with gladness this afternoon in the name of Jesus. From where we are seated and also wherever we are connected, we are going to pray this prayer. The Lord, every deposit that you have released from the realm of the Spirit, we receive it with joy in the mighty name of Jesus. Bible says even as we pray, let us believe that the things that we have prayed, that God has answered them in the name of of Jesus. Lord, this afternoon we usher your glory. Lord, this afternoon we welcome your presence in this atmosphere in the mighty name of Jesus all the things the Lord you are intended to do this evening there shall be no power of contention that will stand in your place in the name of Jesus Lord I know there are many things that you have spoken ahead of this service Lord, there are many things that you have spoken ahead of this convention but let your glory be manifest lord let your glory be manifest my jesus as in paka soko pregedusa in paka zonta liba as in pregedusa liga dupa mazike pregedusa in paka pagadusa let so pregedusa te brenda el impoko soko to pregedia el impoko soko pregedusa em Every effective thing, Lord, everything that you have effected in the spirit realm, we draw in the physical. Let it be manifest in our lives. Let it be manifest in this convention. In the mighty name of Jesus, every contention in the spirit realm, we wrestle in the name of Jesus. Victory as in Pacasata, Le Pushet Bragadusa, as in Pacatusa, or Zepek Pacata. We refuse to be casual in the place of prayer. We refuse to be casual at the feet of Jesus and Pacasata, Le Pusha Catea, as a Pregadusa, and Lusta. And them that are seated in this auditorium, Lord, in this occasion, in the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, as the back of the Lord, let us 
Soco Pregadusa, é Macaço do Pregada, e Jean Pregadusa, Escopradusa, e Pacasacata, é Bruce Cabá, é Pastor Pregadusa, é Das Mata Legada, é Bruce Quetequete, é Bruce Talegada, é Macaça, é Bruce Cabá, é the Lord of Elijah, we give you the glory. Lord, we give you the glory. We receive we glory with thanksgiving. Atmosia is configured to your glory. The atmosphere to your glory. As if the Gedusaka, Pragadusa, and Magabala Kuja, and Prosit, the one in the house of God, everyone that has come, everyone is. Will experience the move of the Holy Ghost in this place. Oh, mighty name we pray finally i want us to pray this evening there are powers that are beyond our comprehension that are there are powers that are over against our lives uh, if we do not have the capacity to confront them except god intervention except there is a corporate prayer we are going to pray this was paul speaking in the book of corinthians and he was speaking to the church in corinth and he was telling them pray for me there is a 
door that is open there is an opportunity there is an opportunity a massive door but adversaries are raising bible says there was opposition we are going to pray every child of god that will gather to pray tonight every force of opposition will crush you by the power of the holy ghost we crush you to we crush you we sentence you to hell in the mighty name of jesus anything that shall be denied the child of god we command the power to expire under this anointing in the mighty name of jesus in this atmosphere no devil is permitted to take the place of god in the mighty name of jesus in one minute let us pray that prayer violently in the name of Jesus, if you value your brethren, it is time to intercede for them in the name of Jesus. Whoever is must come here, whoever must come here, must carry God in the mighty name of Jesus. Every casual walking in God, and the casual way of operating, we reject that demon. That spirit is a pastor, it will not operate here in the name of Jesus. Shall leave the God. All of us in the house of prayer, we shall encounter the Holy Ghost in the mighty name of Jesus. Everybody in the house of God shall be filled with the power, the power of the Mosai in the name of Jesus. Asako Branda, Yegebegedosata, Elempa Kasogoto, Ebrasakata. The Bible says the fervent, the effectual, the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous make a tremendous power available, dynamic in its working. Prayer tonight that every believer, that every child of God must carry power in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, the Bible says the effectual, fervent prayer of the righteous make a tremendous power available, dynamic, dynamic in his working. In the name of Jesus, so shall it be today. So shall it be today in the name of Jesus in Jesus mighty name we pray lastly one second I want us to lift the man of God God has anointed to bring the good tidings to speak to us tonight our father let them speak as oracles lord as they speak let power proceed the bible says and jesus was ministering one day and the power of god was present lord let your power move in every session in the name of jesus thank you jesus in jesus mighty name we pray father we thank you we know you are a prayer answering God. This evening shall be very different. It will be beyond our expectation that God you are going to do wonders in our midst. Show yourself mighty. Every single second of this meeting, the Lord, we shall experience the move of the Holy Ghost in a dynamic manner. We give you praise. Blessed be your name forever. In Jesus' precious name we worship. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we give you all the praise. We ask that you receive our praises this afternoon as we lift our voices to give you thanks for everything that you have done and for who you are. We ask that you will hear us in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's turn to him number eight. It's on page three. Oh Lord my God, when I know someone that consider oh, the words that hands have made. 
Just play the string the Lord, just play the string the Lord. Somebody lift up your voice and make that your heart cry. Let it rain. Let it rain upon me. Let it rain. We are taught yesterday the minute that when the spirit moves, God blesses his people. When the spirit moves, he speaks. Things are created. Go ahead and worship him in the spirit. Go ahead and worship the Lord in the spirit. I've come to draw, 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 draw from you again. I've come to draw, I've come to draw, 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 yeah, yeah. I 
see the floodgates of heaven open. La baraba do shia bata. Le koto koto koto. Shedele de bos. We hear from you again. Have come to draw, 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 draw from you tonight. Kapatosia ta ta to to siya ba. Shata ta 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 ta. Shata ta 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 to siya. Le koto si kata pa ya pata. No koto li kapa ya pata. No koto li kapa ya pata. The spring is broken, is broken, is open. Lekopata, living water is flowing. Shake the levels, ya baba. Shada bodos, shada da da dos, shada da 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 dos, shada da 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 dos. Lord, please don't let me go the same way I came. Don't let me go the same way I came. This is the 11th year convention, and something has shifted for the World Changers International Ministry, Christian Center. Lord, please don't let me go the same way. I'd like you to make that your prayer as we bring forth the servant of the Lord tonight. Don't let me go the same way. Touch me with your hands. Touch me, Jesus. Please don't let me go. The way I came from South Africa, the way I came from Zambia, the way I came from Tanzania, the way I came from Uganda, the way I came from Kenya, online, online, wherever you're watching from. Please don't let me go. The way. Today, <laughs> touch me with your hands, oh Lord. <laughs> please don't let me go. The way I came, the way I came to the Levit Convention. Touch me with your hands, all over those shika bala bala bala. Please don't let me go. The way I came, Lord, touch me with your hands. Touch me with your hands. Oh, please don't let me go. Please don't let me. The way I came, the way I came. for an encounter encounter us because our story is to change yes, Lord. without you we can do nothing yes lord glorify your name in our lives yes, lord. thank you father thank you, 
Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you to be seated.
blood of Jesus, I prevail over all sickness. I'm going to start through that song and you'll be blessed in Jesus' name. Jesus, I love you. Say, Jesus, I love you. Father, we thank you for this afternoon. Speak to us again. Glorify your name in our lives. Speak to us. Let your presence descend here. Open our business mind and cause us to have access to divine secrets. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Developing a flourishing business mindset developing a flourishing business mindset many times when people do things excellently well they tell you that they are using business sense you see them organize things well they say no 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 this business this business we don't want any other short of business here do it well do it like business and then whenever business is called everybody begins to fall in shape 
They tell you, no, we are not joking here. This is not church. This is business. <laughs> As if church is not organized. <laughs> so I decided, no, I am going to run my destiny like business. I'll get all the business ethics and I'll use it to run my destiny. And I discovered that it pays. That's what the Bible says. The children of this world are wiser than the children of God. I say, no way. I will adopt that wisdom. And I will use it to run in God's kingdom. And I discovered that running in such a way makes you do things in a better way. Makes you use little resources to achieve so much. Luke chapter number 2. I discovered that Jesus acquired his own business sense at the age of 12. Luke chapter number 2 from verse number 41 to 49. Jesus Christ acquired his business sense from the age of 12. He started operating like a businessman from the age of 12. No wonder he finished very early. At the age of 33 and a half, he has finished all he came to this world to do and he finished them well and he shouted on the cross, it is finished. And he finished it well. Hallelujah, praise God. So we need to learn from Jesus. So now let's go Luke chapter 2. From verse number 21 to 49, 41 to 49. Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. And when they had fulfilled the days as they returned, the child Jesus tarried behind in Jerusalem. And Joseph and his mother knew not of it. But they, supposing him to have been in the company, went a day's journey. And they sought him among their king's folks and acquaintance. And when they found him not, they turned back again to Jerusalem, seeking him. And it came to pass that after three days, they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the doctors, both hearing them and asking them questions. And all that heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. And when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said unto him, Son, why hast thou thus dealt with us? Behold, thy father and I have sought thee sorrowing. And he said unto them, How is it that ye sought me? Wist ye not that I must be about my father's business? Blessed be the reading, hearing, and doing of God's word. This is the first time Jesus will use the word business, and he used it at the age of 12. It drew my attention and made me to begin to study. How come Jesus was smart enough to know that what he was doing in church was business? At the age of 12. And he told them he's doing business. Then I sat back to check what they said he did. That thing that he did, they want to see the business in it. The Bible says to us, when others went home, he stayed extra time. Oh, so I got the first key. The first sense to business is spend extra time to Fulfill your passion. Jesus gave it to us. Excuse me, sir. His parents went home. He stayed back because it was business, sir. <laughs> if you must be prosperous in life, when others go to sleep, spend extra time fulfilling your passion. Extra time. Spend extra time fulfilling your passion, doing that business. Everybody went home. His parents, including, went home. Jesus stayed extra time. They asked him, why are you doing? Say, I, I am doing business. Wow. All right. So business requires extra time. <laughs> the Bible says again to us, when they found him, they turned back to Jerusalem seeking him. And it came to pass after three days, they found him in the temple. Eh? Business end number two. The best business is the business of the temple. Do business in the temple. <laughs> the best business is business of where? Temple. He was in the temple, not in the market. And he told them he was doing his father's business. I wondered, my God, this is business. That means the best business is the business done in the temple. Hallelujah, praise God. The Bible says again, they found the temple sitting in the midst of doctors, both hearing them and asking them questions. The third point I got there was that Jesus was sitting among doctors, conversing, connecting with those who are ahead of you. 
is one of the strongest keys to the best kind of business you can do. Connect to those who are ahead of you. There are those who know what you don't know. Connect with them. Jesus sat with doctors. He was not yet a doctor. He was a boy. But he sat with doctors. Locate people who are doctors in the matter. Don't locate people who are just doing rehearsal. If you want to start in business, locate those who are advanced in the job of that business. Hallelujah. Praise God. The Bible says, he was sitting among doctors, both hearing them. One of the fastest keys to connect to business skills, to business sense, is ability to hear. Hear clearly. Hear in details. The hearing ability. When people are telling you how they succeeded, hear them. Because the secret of every man is hidden in their stories. Oh, you didn't hear me. The secret of every man is hidden in their stories. I was invited to speak in Reverend George at the Boye's convention some few years ago, like two or three years ago. And I went there to preach. And I preached and the fire of God came down. And I got the tapes of my own messages. I brought them to Nairobi. When I play those messages, I get blessed myself. I will sit down and be hearing my message. Wow, wow, this is the word of God. They, they were videos. So I played them in my wife's car. We were driving. My sons were in the car. So they were all watching. They were very quiet, listening to me preach. So I told one story of myself. One of my sons said, sir, rewind it. So I rewound it. The two of them were laughing. Then it finished. They said I should rewind it again. So I said, why? He said, Dad, we love your stories. <laughs> then one day, we were talking. One of them referred back to the story I told there. And pulled a lesson from it. So, oh, that was when I understood. The secret of men is hidden in their stories. Even children know. The Bible says to us, He was hearing them. Learn to hear people. Learn to hear. Many times you don't want to hear people. You want people to hear you. Some of you have noticed that whenever people come to my house, I'll keep quiet. I'll listen to you. I'll pull out one word from what you said. From there, your children will come. From your word. I discovered that if you must advance in life, learn to hear people. People must not be hearing you every time. Learn to hear people. The Bible says he was hearing them. If you want to excel in business, listen to others who have gone ahead of you. Hear them. The Bible says both hearing them, not talking to them, but was an Asking them questions. The fastest route to the secret of any business is questions. Ask relevant questions. He was not talking back to them. He was asking them questions. That guy was very wise. He was a great businessman. He was not telling them what he knew at the age of 12 because as at that time he knew nothing. He was asking them questions. Sir. <laughs> he was hearing them and asking them questions so they can talk more. Hallelujah. Praise God. So the fastest truth to the secret of any business is questions. Ask questions. The Bible went further and said, All that had him were astonished at his understanding. You see the key there? Understanding. The fastest key to greatness in any business is understanding that business. If you don't understand it, you will never be great. The fastest key, the fastest step to greatness in any business is understanding if you can understand that business my god you will excel you will do well you will do very well you will do extremely well if you can understand that business very well oh glory to god understanding makes you outstanding understanding makes you outstanding in fact i define understanding literally understanding under and you are standing you are under the stuff and you are still standing. So you are carrying the thing on your head. You have made the thing very light and cheap. And you are still standing. That's understanding. Hallelujah. Praise God. Understanding. The Bible says they were amazed at his understanding. The Bible says again. And answers. Always give your answer at the end. Let people download. Collect their sense before you give your answer. Collect their wisdom before whenever you want to become wiser in business allow people to tell you what is in their mind allow them to talk and then you bring your own answer let your answer come last they were amazed at his understanding and then answers hallelujah praise god but when they saw him 
they were amazed. If you have an answer to something, you become an amazement. If you have an answer in business, you become an amazement. Learn to produce answers that will make you an amazement. Believe in it that God has called you to produce answers that makes you an amazement. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. The Bible says to us, and when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said, Son, why has thou dealt us with us? Because thy father and I sought thee sorrowing. And he said unto them, How is it that he sought me? We still know that I must be about my father's business. I have defined his business in a nutshell. True or false? <laughs> Begin to run with business sense. Everything I do, I calculate it. If I am a CEO, how will I handle this? So let's do it well. Let's do it well from day one. Let's do it well. Luke chapter number 2, verse 50. Luke chapter number 2, verse number 50. Hallelujah. Praise God. The Bible says, and they understood not the saying which he spake unto them. Wonderful. And they understood not. <laughs> People were amazed at his understanding, but they understood him. They did not. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, always learn to upgrade your level to the extent that you become a mystery. Upgrade your level in business. Don't tarry where you are. Take it a notch more higher. Take it to a greater height. One more time. So that you become an amazement. Add some more value to what you met. So you become an amazement. Hallelujah. Praise God. Luke chapter number 14. Luke chapter number 14. Verse 28 to 32. Luke chapter number 14. Verse 28. The Bible says... For which of you intending to build a tower, seated not down first, and counted the cost, whether he has sufficient to finish it, least happily after he had laid the foundation, and is not able to finish it, all that behold it begin to mock him, saying, This man began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king going to make war against another king, seated not down first, and consulted whether he be able with 10,000 to meet with the him that cometh against him with 20,000. Or else, while the order is yet a great way off, he sended an embassage and desired a condition for peace. This is the power of planning and forecast. You look ahead into the future to check. You forecast. You look with the eyes of vision whether what you're about to do is possible or not. I, in Christianity, we call it the eyes of faith. You look into the future with the eyes of faith, knowing fully well that God is backing you up. There's nobody who have ever excelled in business that have not planned. Planning is very necessary. <laughs> planning is very... You must plan. Sit not down first. You must sit down first too. I sat down, counted the cost. And I checked in the spirit realm. And God said he's able to do this. And that's why I began. Sit not down first. You don't jump out immediately. You sit down first. When it comes to business, hallelujah. And count the cost. You, you, you go the economical way. You go the accounting way. Hallelujah. Accounting is very necessary because you have to count the cost. It takes accounting for you to know what the cost is. Hallelujah. It takes economics for you to know what the cost is. Or else, you will start and you will be able to finish. Business mindset is a way of thinking that enables you to uncover and see problems as opportunities. And then create a means to turn those problems into golden business opportunities. It is a way of thinking that enables you to uncover and see problems as opportunities. And then create a means to turn those problems into golden business opportunities. Businessman's mindset is an understanding that everything around you is a product of someone else's executed ideas. Everything around you is somebody else's executed idea that somebody executed. That's what you are using. For example, the clothes you are putting on, somebody executed it. Somebody, the shoe you are putting on is somebody else's idea. So that makes you also think, what have I produced for humanity before I'm living? 
what am I going to do on earth so that when I leave, they will remember me for something. Somebody thought of the kind of clothes you're putting on and produced it. What value have you added to this earth? Again, it is an opportunity of inventing what was not there before you came. Or reinventing what was there before you came. Inventing what was not there before you came. Or reinventing what was there before you came. Making it better than you met it. I keep preaching and I tell people everywhere you go to on earth, make sure you add more value than the value you met there. Anywhere you enter, make sure your presence is felt by you adding more value than whatever you met there, the value you met there. Hallelujah. Praise God. Business mindset is the ability to convert human resources and material resources into ever-increasing investment. Human and material. You mix them together and make them to keep yielding for you. <laughs> human and materials. Whether you know it or not, every human being have access to materials. And every human being have access to human being because it was the human being that gave birth to you. <laughs> And you will marry a human being. Except now that they are saying that some people are now marrying goats and all kinds of things. Some years ago, there was a man who married his camel. Is he, uh, sorry, his horse. Something. And the horse wore a wedding gown and he was marrying the horse. It was on Facebook. <laughs> when I went to America, I, I read of a woman who married two of her cats. She married them. Another woman to marry the dog and said the dog is more faithful than a man. That the men she had met, they are not faithful, but this dog is always respecting her. <laughs> I don't need to marry a dog before he respects me. <laughs> Dogs respect me because I'm a child of God. Hallelujah. In fact, not just being a child, I'm a human being, naturally. What kind of dog is that one? <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. So you need to know how to merge humans, human resources, and material to make it produce ever-increasing investment, ever-increasing profit for you. That is business sense. Ever-increasing. It must... See, God created a system that it doesn't need to come to the earth and be creating things anymore. Why don't you create a system that can give back to wealth for you for the rest of your life? Create that system. Again, number five, it is the ego's eye with the ability to see profits at the end and run into it ahead of others to get a vantage position. The eagle eye to see profit at the end, run into it very quickly before others catch up with you. Move into it very fast. Locate a virgin area, take over the place, invest in it before others start coming. Before that, start, 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 start invading the area. So that you can get a vantage position. They will be seeing you as the chairman of the area. Hallelujah. Praise God. Again, business mindset is the ability to capture and captivate and maintain the source of wealth. Making wealth work for you. Ability to capture, one. Ability to captivate. Two. Ability to maintain the source of wealth and make that wealth to begin to work for you. That is business mindset. Capture it. Captivate it. Maintain it. And let it start working for you. Let it start working for you. Again, it is the act of owning the forces that governs wealth with nothing at the beginning but just an initiative. At the beginning, when you start business, you may have nothing. You just have an initiative, an idea, and you excel with it. It is the act of owning the forces that governs wealth. On earth, there are forces that governs wealth. If you don't have those forces that govern wealth, you remain poor. There are forces that governs wealth. All right, I want to hit it running straight so that we are not far behind time. How do I develop a business mindset as a Christian. How do I develop a business mindset as a child of God? How do I develop it? You know, many times when we preach and we don't tell you how to get there, 
It's a wasted preaching. If the guy is wondering, hey, yes, he's good. God is going to bless you. You are going to be a millionaire. Amen. Receive the money. Receive the money. Receive the money. How do I receive this money? <laughs> we need to know the how. Hallelujah. Praise God. You know, and, you know, many people like it when you say receive the money. Say, Amen. Take it there. I take it. Take it there. Ross, you will not take anything if you don't know how. <laughs> how do I take this thing? I say, take it. Hallelujah. So you can take it spiritually and not take it physically. I can release the energy and you fall down. You get up. You fall down. You get your clothes are very dirty and you go home. And you remain poor because you did not know how to take it. Hallelujah. So let's break it down to how to develop a business mindset. Number one. Have clear objectives in life. At every point of your life, have clear objectives. Know what you want. Develop that mindset. Clear objectives. Have clear ob. Know where you are going to. Don't miss words. Don't be in between. Naturally, I don't like people like that around me. I don't like people who do not have clear objectives. When you ask them, what you say, maybe, hey, I'll tell you, leave, 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 now, leave, leave, go and think, go and use your brain, use your brain, switch it on, switch it on. Sometimes you see, hear me say, use all your brain, switch everything on, all the chapters, don't leave anything. <laughs> see, brain has different areas. If you switch them on, they will start working for you. Science has said that most human beings use less than 10% of their brain while on earth. When they said that, that, they said that I can use at least 90% of my brain. So I started developing my brain to do many things. I developed my brain in the area of psychology, sociology, anthropology, building, anything. I started using my brain to do it. What I do is I sit down. I don't allow people to stop me. I think and I download. Many times when I think and I'm not able to get to it, God will show me in Revelation and I'll download it. Different areas of life different aspects of life hallelujah praise god <laughs> then i began to tell god show me how to create a system that i don't need to multiply keep creating systems. you know one system that will make things wrong the way you are relaxing the way god you know god is relaxing it does not give him a headache god relaxing in heaven i want to get to never relax to things will be working for me and then god began to help me develop clear objectives Matthew chapter 1 verse 21. Matthew 1 21. Clear objectives on every issue, on every matter. The Bible says, She shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. The objective is, for he shall save his people from their sins. Full stop. There was no mincing words about it. There was no, he may save people and later not say that, eh, eh, he shall save. One statement told us the entire summary of why Jesus came. He shall save his people from their sins. Sit back and get clear objectives why you are created by God. Get clear objectives of each thing you are doing. Whenever I'm traveling, I ask myself, why am I traveling? I am going to such and such place to preach. Wow. I face that preaching, sir. I do nothing else. There was a time I got to preach somewhere and they tried to distract me. I said, don't distract me. I came here to preach. This is the reason why, and I will shout, I came. I didn't come to do other things. There was a time I traveled, and they told me I should travel, move around to see the area. So I calculated. By the time I finish in the area, I will be very tired before I start preaching. So I said, no, leave the area alone. I will check it on the internet <laughs> when I need it. Because by the time I travel, they show me, hey, that is shopping mall. I said, whoa, shopping mall. <laughs> They take it. That's monkey. They say, wow, monkey, wow. That's baboon. No, that's not why I came. No, no. I came for something more important. Hallelujah. I have clear objective of what I came here for. Let me face it. And I do that. See, there are many tourist attractions in Kenya. I've not been to... It was my wife that dragged us to one some time ago when she said, we don't even visit anywhere. We are just permanently praying. Let us... <laughs> Every time, prayer, prayer, prayer. So... We went to, where was the name of that place? Somewhere in Nakuru. So I asked her now, so with all the anointing I carry, I should be looking at animals. I'm looking at an animal. Look at, look at a monkey. Look at a monkey that's looking at me. That's all. Hi. What profit will it profit me now? 
This monkey doesn't even know who I am. That this guy can heal the sick. The monkeys don't care. And I'm looking at them like this. And they're looking at me. And we're very happy. Child. <laughs> she told me that time to relax. Go up and say, hey, take it easy. When we grow older, hey, we cannot be cooling off. Two of us, we are not very old, so we hold ourselves and we go and cool off. But now that there is energy and strength, let me use it to teach the word of God around the world. Are you understanding me? Why am, it's not that I don't know that what she's saying has some element of truth in it, but there's time for everything. I want to invest my life now that I'm strong and healthy. So that when I start growing old, eh, I'll be sleeping more that time. Sleep, get up, eat some food. Things are working for me. Not that I wake up into poverty. <laughs> you know, when you have not invested and you start resting up and down. By the time you are 60, you wake up with hunger, we wake you up. <laughs> you just sleep in your hunger. When your stomach is biting, you wake up. So let us work now. So that hunger does not have power to wake us up then. Have clear objectives. Why did you come to Nairobi? You came for this conference, face it. That's where I behave. Why did you travel to London? I don't even know. It was one time they told me that I passed through somewhere called London Bridge. I don't know where it is. We were in the train. They said, this is London Bridge. London Bridge. Said, oh, so this is the bridge. Wow. Because when we were small, we said, London Bridge is falling down. But <laughs> I never got out to check where it is because I don't care about it. After, if I come and look at it, what value will it add to my life? That's what I ask myself. When I jump up and down and do this, what value will it add to my life? No value, so I drop it. Do you know that when I was young, I used to like football? <laughs> I would go and play football. In 1990, my leg was broken. Night, they were playing Italia 90, I remember. I was the goalkeeper. No, I was goalkeeper after a while. They told me to go and play number nine. So they passed the ball to me. And I like hitting the shot very hard. So I fired the shot. There was stone. I did not know. So I hit the ball and the stone. And the stone uprooted with the ball and was facing the goalkeeper. The goalkeeper ran away. The, the stone and the ball. The stone and the ball entered. But that was the end of my legs. I was on the floor. Wham. My leg became bigger than my, the size. My playmates were afraid. That was the end of that game. They carried me. By the time I got home, my leg was bigger than normal. My father said, your mates went to Italy to go and bring money. You, you broke broken leg for me. He was very mad. In fact, he did not take me to hospital. He brought one local man with bone. The man brought bone of a dead man to come and arrange my bone. I saw the man. They held me and the man held my leg. And organ it was painful. So I was crying. He said, quiet. Your mates went to Italy. Italy, you, 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 you came back from one corner football to come and break. Cost me money. They started arranging my leg with Ori and all kinds of bam and all that. I, I cried for this. It was while in that pain I told football, have, bye bye, have a good day. Don't care about you anymore. I traveled to Brazil when Nigeria was playing with Brazil. I don't even care. I wasn't watching it. In those days, you get too interested. I asked myself, what value would this football add to me? No value. Football, hold yourself. So Nigeria can be playing with Kenya now, be sleeping. I don't care. Why? Because it's not adding any value to me. In fact, it will give you more high blood pressure. Eh? 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 All the screaming moving up and down. What value? Have clear objectives for everything you do. Number two, planning. Plan every move. Planning helps you to get the best of every move. Plan it. Planning. Predetermined lines. Setting predetermined lines of action to achieve your objectives. Set predetermine lines of action to achieve your objectives. Sit down and plan. The Bible says to us, which of you intended to build a tower? Sit it not down first. Planning is calling yourself to a meeting by yourself. Call yourself to a meeting. Planning is gathering yourself so that you don't get scattered. Sit down. Count the cost. 
whether you have sufficient to finish it. Everything you do, I plan. I plan a lot. I wake up in the night, I'll just be quiet, thinking in my brain, writing things out, thinking out, until I'm sure. When I'm sure, wow, you see the speed at which I move? I move with terrible speed, sir. You can't catch up with me. My mind is already made up. Planning empowers. Planning adds value. Planning makes you to know each road to take. You don't need to be looking for what's not lost. Planning. Count the cost. Number three. The third way to develop a business mindset is customer creation. Learn to create your customers. Who are your customers? Everything you do on earth, there are those that must follow you. There are those that will love you. There are those that will connect to you. Who are your customers? As a pastor, you must learn to create your customers. Those that will listen to your message. As a businessman, you will learn to create your customers. Those that will respect what you are doing. Or else, if you do it and nobody is respecting it, what are you doing it for? Every profession you get into has customers. How do you create it? How do you create your customers? Customer creation. No business survives without clients or customers. Create your own customers for your business by discovering what they need and how much they need it. What time they need it. What place do they need it. What price do they need it. And then provide it at the right time, in the right place, at the right quantity. I'm telling you, you will have your customers running after you. What do they need in this area? Do they need another Mabati church? Mabati is a uh, church made of pan. No. They have enough. Move around. You see many. To so create something better. If God has still sent you to the same place, make something better for everybody. Hallelujah. Praise God. The Bible says in 1 Kings chapter 4, verse 34. 1 Kings 4, 34. And there came of all people to hear the wisdom of Solomon. For all kings of the earth... From all kings of the earth, which have heard of his wisdom. So what God did for Solomon is give him grace and his customers were kings. Solomon's customers were who? Kings, royalty. God gave him a kind of wisdom that can handle them. That cut across kings and kings began to look for him. When kings finished listening to him, they started sending kings to be to him. He started training future kings. Hallelujah, praise God. To locate your customer. Who are your customers? Are they kings? Who are your customers? Are they the, according to Kenya, the Mwananchi? Or are they the big men in the society? Who are your customers? What, the school you are going to now, who are those that benefit from your going to school? What you are learning, who are those that will benefit from it? That's where your wealth comes from. That's where your wealth comes from. Remember I said, Whenever I'm teaching, I taught and said, the more you learn, the more you earn. The more you learn, the more you earn. The quality of your learning determines the quality of your earning. If you're not earning well, it's because you have not learned well. Your delivery is poor. Your learning determines what you deliver. And what you deliver determines what you earn. So the better you learn, the better you earn. Because in life, learning precedes earning. Learning precedes earning. You must learn first before you earn. If you have learned nothing, you will earn nothing. Hallelujah. Praise God. Alright? Number four. Business sense. Business mindset. Ex ex develop excellence oriented and excellence oriented organization. Excellence. Excellence. See, you might not be where you think you should be now, but where you are, let us see excellence. Anywhere you are now, let us see some level of excellence. This church is not fully built, but if you look at it well, you see that these guys have somewhere they are going to. Some people say that it's working. As I'm preaching, I'm looking at what these guys are doing. By the time conference is over, there are some of them that will chop kuboko. <laughs> because they are doing things not the way I like it being done. Hallelujah. Be excellent oriented. Excellence is you adding just an extra to what others have done. And they said it is the best. 
add it just a little extra. Just a little extra. That's excellence. Adding just a little extra. That is what they call excellence. Glory to God. You don't need to do much. Just a little extra. This garment would have been fantastic as blue. Am I right? But the designer just added this and this to make it look more unique. But that's the collection. It would have been nice. Just blue. But they said, no, let us add maybe the cross of Jesus Christ. <laughs> Just a little. It made it unique. And when I was dressed, my wife said, Wow, you're looking good. So I need for this thing that added color. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Add a little more. Don't stop where others stopped. Take it a niche further. That's excellence. Don't stop where others stopped. If you stop where others stopped, you will, they will rate you with others. For you to excel, take it a step further. That's what they call excellence. Hallelujah. Praise God. Number five. I want to say something very serious here. Number five is very serious. And this will keep you relevant forever. Number five. Discover the needs of the future. And start meeting them. Discover the needs of the future. Don't worry, they will soon fix all this glass. Now, when they fix it, it will stop the sound from disturbing us. The guy ran away. I had to use fire to command him to return here. Discover the needs of the future. Look into the future. What do they need? You will become very relevant for the rest of your life. All those have been business, am I right? Discover what people need in future. For example, have you discovered that everybody is online now? Do you know that churches that are not online closed? In the days when we were going online, going online, Father, what do I say? Go online. Hey, go online. So I told my guys, yeah, let us go online. So we got camera. We said, now, this camera, now, can we connect it? They connect to Facebook. They connect to YouTube. I did not know in the days of the pandemic it was going to deliver us. When pandemic struck, everybody ran away from church. So I called a few of my leaders and said, let your head be correct. We'll be using online for service now. But you must come to church to carry the camera and make sure that service is on. Mercy here, they said, yes, sir. So I will sit here. The altar was built. The altar was the first thing we built here. We built this altar. It was not having rock like this. It, the rock came yesterday. Some of you saw when they were putting it. Uh -huh. There was no rock. So we just, I just sit on it. They put the camera and I'm preaching. And I'm shouting, receive thunder, receive fire. Amen. That's how this church was sustained throughout the pandemic. <laughs> I remember one of the days, this young man came. Two of us were sitting and they were talking the Bible, preaching the Bible. And suddenly one woman came in and sat down. And I was wondering, who told this woman to come in? There's pandemic and churches are closed. Who is this woman in the pandemic? So I kept on preaching. You know, see, one of the days I would teach on cognitive intelligence. Cognitive intelligence is the ability to understand your environment even while they are doing something else. You know what is going on. Being conscious of everything around you. I will teach on it. My father taught me that no matter what you are doing, make sure you are smart to know what is going on around you. Don't be a fool. Don't let people catch you unawares. So let your mind be alive and alert. Don't let anything catch you suddenly. So while I'm moving, my spirit is just alive. I will teach about that one of the days. <laughs> so no matter where, you can't catch me suddenly. It's difficult. Because before you come, I already, I'm already seeing you. from every... <laughs> Not with prophetic eyes. Just some kind of intelligence. I don't just sleep uh, and I'm not, not lie. Before you come close, I would have seen you. When I got married, you know, my wife wanted to, I don't know what she said, she wanted to kill mosquito or something. I was sleeping like that. She thought I slept completely. So I don't know if she was bringing her hand towards my face. <laughs> I caught the hand mid-air. I, I didn't know she was the one. I thought it was the devil coming. <laughs> I pounced on the hand. I was in the bed. Caught the hand from mid-air. About to remove it. She shouted, it's my hand. She said, what do you want to do to me? She said she was killing mosquitoes. Be careful though. Because I saw her hand coming from my dream. I caught it in the spirit. 
<laughs> I don't sleep too deep. You know, hallelujah. You must be able to recognize your environment. Ability to look into the future and know what people want, what they need. That was how many churches were sustained online and some closed completely. They are not able to gather the members anymore till now. Why? Because they never looked into the future. They did not look into the future. Look into the future. What do people need in the next 20 years? Supply it now. You'll be relevant in 20 years. When others are fading away, you start shining. What do they need? Think it. In fact, if I stop here, I think I've preached. If you can sit down now and think, what do people of my generation need in 20 years' time? If you can supply it, you are a great man. Your greatness just began. Look at all those. Look at the young man that started Zoom. This Zoom that we are using now. It was somebody that started it. They said he resigned from some from Microsoft or somewhere and started Zoom. And people are looking at him and laughing. As soon as the pandemic struck, bam, he became a multi-billionaire. Because everybody Zoomed on him. I remember we, we have two Zoom accounts now. And the guy has eaten some money from us. But uh, Imagine all the people that collected Zoom that period. Over Zoom was what it was. all Zooming all over the world. And the guy was eating money. His destiny changed in one minute. He looked into the future. Zoom have existed before the pandemic. But we didn't care about it. In fact, I've heard about it, but I didn't Zoom. Let the Zoom, zoom relax. <laughs> what are we Zooming about? I prefer laying hands on the sick. I remember one of the days during the pandemic, I was preaching and the anointing came on me and I came out down and I wanted to lay hands. I discovered the chairs were empty. Wow. So I, I, I gathered myself and I said, wow. Oh, see, pandemic. <laughs> so I, I learned to lay hands in the spirit. <laughs> Look into the future. What will this generation need in future? That is thinking with business mindset. Hallelujah. Praise God. Discover the need of the future. Finding out what your customer needs, both now and in future. The time they need it, the price they can afford, how long they will need it, the place they need it, and how often they need it, and how to improve on it in case it begins to fade. How to improve on it in case it starts losing relevance. How do I improve on it? Business mindset. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter number 8 verse 12. Proverbs 8 verse says, I, wisdom, dwell with prudence and find that knowledge of witty inventions. Witty invention. I find out the knowledge. Look into tomorrow. So it can be relevant tomorrow. Number six. Learn how to generate funds from where you are with what you have. Learn how to generate funds. Funds is the lifeblood of every business enterprise. It brings together labor, machine, raw material, and it turns them into production. Labor, machines, raw materials are turned into production by funds. All this building existed in the spirit realm. It became a reality when I got material and labor. And they mixed it together and put it here. But I needed to pay them. It took money to bring the material here. Am I right? Put, pay the labor. They mixed the material with their labor. And they became a building. Are you understanding that? So money does that. How do I generate it? You must sit back and ask it. The way a personality generates funds is not the way you generate your own. People are peculiar. Many times when you want to copy somebody's way, you may lose it. All right. Bishop will say everybody should sacrifice and then the building will be done. Some like people just do sacrifice on their own and go away. You just see buildings springing up in these in this, uh, meetings. And then he will tell you, I never beg for bread. And that is his lifestyle. But now, you at your level, you need to go and ask your ma for money. If you shut up, hunger will kill you. <laughs> you need to know how to do your own. Everybody has their own grace on how to operate. You must learn how you generate your own funds. If you cannot generate your own... See, the reason why I generate funds is because 
what you are looking for somebody has it in excess that's the truth the problem is that there's no connection between you and the person generation of ones is connecting to the person that have what you need and the person is happy to give it to you that's generation of funds. You must know how to generate funds for every business idea you have. You must start first so people can see what you have started and then the funds begin to come. There is funds for every business if you have the right idea on how to do it. Every idea on how to do it is peculiar, special to each person by the grace of God. Let's go to the next point. I don't want to overflow that one. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 19. He says, A feast is made for laughter, and wine maketh merry. When it comes to business, money answereth all things. Money answereth all things. Money is an answer when it comes to business. Number what are we now? Number seven. I'm teaching on how to develop a business mindset. Locate, see, determination of the right location. Determine the right location for your business. There is a location you can take your business and it will die. It will not see the light of the day. Determine the right location. The location of a business determines its allocation. In terms of accessibility, to raw materials, availability of infrastructure, availability of human resources. In fact, manpower, where are they available? If your business is in a faraway location that you need to charter men from another location, you might pay a lot moving people there. I traveled to Seychelles some two or three years ago. And then they told me that there are many other islands around Seychelles. Some of them are inhabited, some of them are not inhabited. So I asked, why are people not inhabiting them? They say, eh? Hey, if you stay there, you will die alone. I say, how? Because for you to, if you want to build a house, you will need to go to the other place to collect material and transport it there. Before you transport it there, you would have wasted all the whole money. Transporting by sheep, getting there off load, and start building. For you to even convince people to come and build for you there, ah, you will pay a lot, so it's not inhabited. Imagine you go and start church there global changes intercontinental ministry you'll be there alone <laughs> you'll be there alone <laughs> you must discover the right location whenever you get to a place ask what can i do in this area and prosper is this place the right location for me to operate what can i do because there's something you can do in an area and you prosper you do it in another area it will never prosper you do it in Nigeria, you prosper. <laughs> Even in Nigeria, I'm holding this conference. Eh? This place will be packed inside and outside, up everywhere on the streets. I don't use posters to preach in Nigeria. Just announced Apostle Eric is coming. Everywhere is packed to overflow, sir. But Kenya is different. We've been announcing for a long time. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. <laughs> a long time. And somebody will ask, what am I going to get when I go to that conference? Will they give me food? What will I get? <laughs> you know, sometimes I wanted to run to South Africa. Because when I went to South Africa to preach, I was still preaching. I was downloading the way I normally download. As I was downloading, one man shouted, Amen! Amen! And then he ran out from his seat and he put $1,000 in my shoe. When I did like this, $1,000 jumped out. Bam! The ushers were packing it. $1,000 was a wonderful so I preach again, I preach again. Another one ran, put hundred dollars. I said, wonderful. Cha, it's good to be in South Africa. So I came to Kenya and I preach and I preach. And the guy just shake their head like this. <laughs> and he just shook their head like this. And I said, take it, take it. They are wondering, bros. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah, praise God. Uh, now looking at me. Take what? Oh God, the one we took is enough. <laughs> I said, ah, what is happening here? It's a different location. <laughs> the different location entirely. 
with a different mindset. So you must discover what sells there. What sells there? Hallelujah. Praise God. Right location. The Bible says in 1 Samuel 16, 17 to 19. 1 Samuel 16, 17 to 19. And Saul said unto his servants, Provide me now a servant that can play well and bring him to me. Then answered one of the servants and said, Behold, I have seen the son of Jesse the Bethlehemite, that is cunning in plain and a mighty valiant man, a man of war, prudent in matters, and a comely person. And the Lord is with him. Wherefore Saul sent messengers to Jesse and said, Send me David thy son, which is with the sheep. Now, look at the location. David was playing in the forest with, for animals before. And suddenly, what he played in the forest became relevant in the palace. And from the palace, he sat on the throne. Excuse me, sir. Locate the right location. If David kept on playing for those animals, he would never answer Larry. He would have died in the forest. He kept on playing for the animal. The animals would be very happy with him. That's where it ends. So there comes a time when you need to relocate to the right location so you can get, become more profitable. Location determines our location. When they played for the king, the king became well. When they played for the animals, the animals were fine. That, that's all. Nobody paid him. <laughs> location. Location. Number eight. Discover and develop how to manage resources because they are forever scarce. How do I manage resources? You must develop grace to manage it because resources are forever scarce. Sir, I know you are in business. Sir, I know you are in business. Sir. Are resources ever available? Because I know you are ahead of me now. They are forever scarce. I've got that never enough, including money. In fact, if you have more than enough money, you, your brain will not work well. I discovered one day, was it three or four weeks ago, I preached, I was speaking to Safaricom staff. I told them my top, the topic of my message is the benefit of poverty. What does it say? I'm telling you, sir. Come, that's the biggest company in East Africa. I'm their chaplain. So I told them the topic of my message today is the benefit of poverty. One said, excuse me, sir. Does poverty have any benefit? I said, allow me to download. <laughs> I discovered that one of the greatest benefits of poverty is it shoots up your intelligence. It makes you more intelligent. Sir, have I said the truth, sir? It makes you uncommonly creative, sir. Poverty. Ah, your head will be extremely correct. You see, am I right, sir? I'm telling you. <laughs> when you are poor, you devise means to get the things done without money. You will get to destination. By poverty, sir, you still get there. Okay. <laughs> the benefit of poverty, sir. When you are poor, your your brain is more sharp. A rich man's brain is dull, I'm telling you, sir. The guy just says, eh, take money, take money. A poor man devises a way to create the thing and make it happen. The benefits of poverty is a message. <laughs> it has benefits, sir. When you are poor, you, there are some things you dodge. You don't enter into trouble anyhow. You have avoid trouble because you know if you enter trouble, you might not come out. <laughs> you might never come out of that trouble. So you avoid it because of poverty. Because when you are rich, you say, what? Take it. You don't drop 100,000. I know shame you. The day you enter one trouble, you don't know that money cannot solve it. But when you are poor, you don't try it. You avoid trouble. It makes you notice where there's trouble and you take another route. Because you can't afford to be seized. Because the only thing you have is your freedom. Since you don't have money. So you must learn how to manage resources. Because resources are forever scarce. Poor or inefficient management is one of the major killers of any business. Poor or inefficient management kills business. It must be effective in the combination of man, machine, money and material you must be effective in the combination of man machine money and material those four m's you must know how to manage them if you overuse the machine it will break down if you overuse the man he'll be fatigued if you overuse the money it will be depleted 
if you overuse man, they will run away. So you must know how to use them. Balance usage. That is business sense. When I wanted this work done faster, the convention was approaching. The guys have not worked as much as I wanted. What I did was I changed the incentive. A laborer is paid $10 per day here. $10. So I increased it to $15 per night. I saw people lining up here that they want to work in the night. Yeah. <laughs> we have to be driving them away. Just increase. And they were working, sir. They were pl doing things overnight. When I wake up, I think the work they did overnight was more than what they did in the day. Just increase the incentive. Learn how to combine it to get the best done, sir. If you do not combine it well, you will waste one and it will stop the others from moving because a combination of all makes the business run. When one is depleted, it can stop the progress of the other. Imagine when your machines are broken down, what would you use? Or materials are finished and you have man and machine. So you must know how to combine them to keep running at equilibrium so they can keep producing. Hallelujah. Praise God. May God give you that wisdom today. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says in Genesis 41, verse 38 to 44, And Pharaoh said unto his servants, Can we find such a one as this, a man in whom the Spirit of God is? Genesis 41, verse 38. Now we are in verse 39. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, For as much as God has showed thee all this, there is none so discreet and wise as thou art. You need discretion in handling man, machine, and money and materials. You need discretion, sir. If you don't have discretion, you can't manage it. You can't. Aye, they will frustrate you, sir. Why was Joseph promoted in the house of Potiphar? Because he was discreet and wise. He used discretion. He knows how to manage everything. And there will be f everything will be fantastic. Hallelujah. Praise God. Number nine. Business sense. You need to develop human relations. Human relations or human relationships. Learn how to handle human beings. Every great business that you see on earth was made by a man or marred by a man. Men make businesses. Men also destroy businesses. If you have the wrong personnel on board, they can destroy your business. And there's no business that can run without men. You need some men to help you run it. May God give you faithful men. There must be a faithful man who can find faithful people as scarce. But may God give you faithful men. You need to develop grace for human resource re relationship human relations how to relate with human beings you need to learn it may god give us that grace and then remember every country is peculiar every country is peculiar in china you can get cheap labor because there are plenty in kenya there are not that plenty you might not get cheap labor in china there's cheap labor there's a lot of crowd that wants to work Five dollar per day, they are already working because there's no food, and that five dollar can fetch them some stuff. But here, five dollar per day, you are joking. You are joking. <laughs> you can get somebody. Yes. And then you say China is more developed than Kenya. Yes, but here, the human beings are scarce. They are not as much as there. There, I was told that they can take you to prison and decide to kill all of them, and nothing will happen. And they said that five hundred of them, they should take their hearts and sell it to other people and kill them and sell their hearts. And sell their kidneys. In fact, their kidneys become more important than themselves. Oh, you don't know? They say this man, ah, see kidney. They be looking at you. They be seeing kidney. See, see kidney, child. If I catch this guy now, kidney for sale, one million. <laughs> oh, you don't know. So when they catch the man, he's not the man that they're, they're interested in his kidney. His kidney is very important. Or his heart that is making kuchu. This is your heart. You don't know it's very expensive. <laughs> If you do anything in China, they catch you. Your heart can be sold. <laughs> they say they will harvest. They call it harvest. So they catch up. They say, okay, let us kill 500 prisoners. So they are harvest their hearts and their kidneys. And their pancreas. And their osophagus. And they will sell everything. 
But here, try it. The way they will handle you. <laughs> so, discover how to relate with men in each location you find yourself. That is where some businesses thrive in some nations and when it gets to another nation, it doesn't thrive. I want to finish first. Number 10, innovation. To me, innovation is ability to reinvent both yourself and what has been invented before. Ability to reinvent both yourself and what has been invented before. Be innovative. Recreate what you met. Add more value to what you saw. Recreate yourself. Wow. Don't worry. By the time you come back next year and everything is looking fantastic, or come back later this year, you'll be very happy. But yeah, we used to be here when wind will blow from the corn. From the <laughs> and past church. The wind doesn't have respect. You just pass the church and now. <laughs> you look at the dust and move to the other side. After a while, it can't pass again. It has to stay there and humble himself. <laughs> Hallelujah. Innovation. You must be innovative. Think in a way that how to reinvent yourself. Make yourself new. In fact, in your marriage, you need to reinvent yourself. Oh. Don't be the same yesterday, today, and forever. Reinvent yourself in your home, in your family, in all that you do. Do you know before, I couldn't teach. I was a born preacher. I love preaching. When I come, I'll take the microphone, I'll be shouting. God is blessing you today. By now, my shoes will be full of water everywhere. My body be, I used to carry towel to wipe my head. <laughs> wipe my face. I was a born preacher. I couldn't teach. Hey, within a few minutes, I'm pointing to you. I'm falling down. I'm, I used to like that one a lot. When I point you, I just fly. Command the devil see you to get out. Receive that faithful. Listen, I loved it a lot. Then Reverend Joe called me. said, you will die before your time. The energy you are burning. You are burning your life very fast. He said, why don't you sit back and ask God to give you grace to teach? He said, teaching makes more impact than preaching. Preaching steers people up to give their life to Christ. Steers them up to get miracles. But preaching, teaching, gives them lasting impact. They will never forget. They will, their life will be more better than when they met us. Wow. So I began to say, Father, give me teaching grace. Give me teaching. But I couldn't teach. Sometimes I'll tell them, I'm going to teach on this topic. Before five minutes, I say, God, we change your life. I see your life changing. They will say, people like you. They say, yeah, yeah, man. Oh, you don't believe in Nigeria. Nigeria like preachers. Somebody say, tell them. Another say, pastor, you are talking to me. You are talking to me. <laughs> Another one will carry you on his head and say, hey, this will. <laughs> Somebody will come and sit on the other and say, child, see what? Even you'll be very happy with child. I'm impacting the whole world. <laughs> After you finish, ask them, what did the pastor be <laughs> They say that guy, he preached. That's all. <laughs> they can't remember what he said. So my spiritual father told me, sit down and learn. Reinvent yourself. He said, or else you will soon fade. It's only when they need an evangelist they will bring you. When evangelists are not needed for crusade, they won't bring you. During the pandemic, there was no need for evangelists anywhere. All crusades were shut down. I had to learn to teach. That's why when I had a Casey Price died, I was very grieved. God impacted me through that guy. I listened to Casey Price and anointing to teach came on me. That guy can teach you. Casey, whoa. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Ah, man, I can't forget those teachings. I listened to his tapes over and over, over and over, praying in tongues, listening to his tapes. Reverend George Adegui, that one is a teacher, sir. He will be doing microphone. I don't know, you've not met the guy. Chai, he's the pastor of my wife. My wife was the welfare director of their church before I got married. He'll be doing 16, 17 of Genesis. 1832 of here. See, every Bible passage in his brain like this. Those are men that taught me to teach. I sat down and listened to them. Prayed and prayed. One day God said, I have given you the teaching grace. You will teach nations my word. And I began to teach. I didn't know I could calm down. There were the days some of my friends came from U.S. We were together in Nigeria before they traveled. We were preachers before they all left. They came to Kenya and they saw me teaching. One stood up and said, eh? So you can teach? 
when I told him to come and greet you, he said, your pastor is a different person. We knew him before. He can preach the devil from hellfire to heaven. When he's preaching, devil is okay, fine. I'm on my way to heaven. <laughs> Reinvent yourself. That's what I'm trying to say. So that you can be relevant at time. In season and out of season. Reinvent yourself. Work on yourself. There are areas of the that needs improvement. That's business mindset. How do I remain relevant for the rest of my life? Please reinvent yourself. There are areas of life that you need to look into. Working of miracles, healings. I had to get the nine gifts of the spirit. Pray each into my life so I can be a relevant preacher in different aspects of life. One day God spoke to me and said, The nine gifts are given to you, but I'll steer each up. Wherever you go to where it is relevant. And that's exactly what happens. There are places that I've gone to. They know me for miracles. When I touch you, you stand and begin to run. There are areas they say word of knowledge. There are areas is prophecy. In fact, my, the beginning of my flu in Kenya, they used to call me the prophet from Nigeria. Prophet Eric is around. Prophet. That was my title anyway, but because I prophesied and rain began to fall. So, it invent yourself. Develop what I mean by this. Develop other areas of your life. Don't be the same yesterday, today, and forever. You're not El Shaddai. You shall die. <laughs> develop other areas of your life i want to close here now i believe god has taught you something this afternoon develop business mindset let me check whether you have learned something can i have one microphone please yes one of the mics here. what have you learned today anybody what have you learned today Oh, the mic is on. Studio, is her mic on? It's not on. Um, the interpreter is not hearing you too. Oh yeah, give them this one. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh -huh. I've learned... <coughs> How to discover and develop how to manage resources because they are forever scarce. Forever scarce. Thank you. Somebody else, what have you learned? Hallelujah. Oriented. Yes. It's business sense. Sense, yes. It is my sense. Thank you, sir. I said, everyone who succeeds keeps saying, I use business mindset, business sense, to develop it as Christians so that we don't fail. And they say, those guys, they only know how to pray. They don't know any other thing. To fear, but it will never happen here. In Jesus' name. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Make sure the mic is permanently on. Or collect this one. Please, let the interpreter needs to hear what we are saying so she can say it in French. What has challenged me so much is we need to discover the need of the future. Hmm. In this case, we may now be continuously in generating funds or wealth because we will be steady in all what we are doing. Thank you, sir. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, sir. That is from the bishop. We appreciate you, sir. Recently, I watched a video of a lady who was criticizing men of God, how um, they are turning churches into business and then um, having their sons also becoming pastors. So this afternoon, that has actually helped me to understand that the best business is the business of the temple. Thank you. And even if you have your other businesses, the work of God is, should be the primary thing. Thank you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. What I've learned this afternoon is that you need to spend time in the business that you are in. 
you need to spend extra time and you also have to plan and also develop um, resources how to make money in your business yes. because uh, money is the blood life of, of, of every business. Every business. Thank yes. you very much. Thank you. Wow. Thank you. Praise God, Church. Hallelujah. Uh, can you uh, learn from this afternoon lesson uh, to be humble at the presence of my Lord if I want to go far in life? Yes. No, we did not talk about humility today. Yeah. That is what I can say I've learned from. Uh, okay, that means an angel was telling you that one. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, give somebody else a mic because I, I wasn't talking about humility today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know. <laughs> All right. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I've learned uh, if I, I should succeed in the business I do, I should learn how to manage well the four hands. Man, machine, money, and material. Okay, your head is correct. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Look at that person at the back there. You come down here. Okay. I've learned to see every problem as an opportunity. Simple. That's a business and mindset. And every opportunity, uh, every problem to golden opportunity. Thank you. Give to that man there. Then we'll come here. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. I have learned that Jesus is the author of business, not only moving by spiritual, but also if you balance spiritual life and the physical life, then by understanding that Jesus was the first person to open the door for us of the business world. At the so age is, of 12. Yes. God bless you. So it is very important to me. Hallelujah. Praise God. Okay, hit that way, and then you come this way. So when you come this way, we close. That lady. And Pastor Funke. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I've learned um, for you to be relevant in the business world, you should have the foresight to see what will sell in the next 20 years. Yes. Amen. Foresight, yes. Thank you. Come to Mama here. <coughs> Uh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, this afternoon, I have learned how to be, how to develop business as a child of God, and to have a clear objectives as I move into the field. God bless Thank you. Man. Yes. All right. Let's be on our feet so we can close. I will only pray that God will give you grace to implement. You know, we learn a lot. Many times we forget what we've learned because we don't put them into action. Put into action what you have learned. Action. Put them into action so that you can prosper. Go ahead, pray. Father, give me grace to put everything I've learned into action. In the name of Jesus, the grace to put everything I've learned into action. Everything I've learned. I want to be using business sense to run everything around me. Jesus started using business sense to run ministry. At the age of 35, he has already fulfilled his destiny. Help me, oh God, to use business sense to run everything. I do. Help me, Jesus. I receive your help. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, we pray. Lord, I have taught your word in order to cause our minds to shift so that we can do things excellently well using the business mindset in Christianity. We will not go and cheat others. We will not go and look for what is not our own. But we will do everything you've committed into our hands well. Both in the secular world and in the temple. We ask, oh God, that that grace rests upon us today. As we step out, let multi-billionaires emerge from this meeting. As we begin to use the right business mindset. Above all, I'm asking that you open our eyes to see what will make us relevant in the next 20, 50 years. And cause us to capture it and begin to operate and run with it. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Let's get our offerings and give our offerings to that.
use the pay bill 821430. You can use the Send Wave app for those in diaspora. be accepted by you. Let every giver be uncommonly blessed in the mighty name of Jesus. Do us good. Do us good, mighty Father. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord. I ask, O oh God, that you cause each giver to receive the reward of giving, the harvest of giving, swimming in plenty. For the Bible says, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over, shall men give to your bosom. With the same measure that it meets with God, it shall be measured to you again. Lord, I'm asking that you cause us to harvest good measure, pressed down, shaking together, running over. Let men be sent by God to bring it to our bosoms. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Lord, as we rest briefly, let your grace be made available for us. Be kind to us in all areas of life. In Jesus' name, we pray. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. We will start by 6.15 so we can have an hour more or more to rest. So we can rest in any of the rooms. <coughs> by 6.15 we 